Dr. Katherine Clinton here, and I'm excited to be talking with you about structured water, exclusion zone water, or easy water, or the fourth phase of water. Now, there are many researchers over the last several decades that have highlighted a new phase of water. All of us in school learned about uh, liquid, solid, gas phase of water, but there is another phase of water that has been identified by Gerald Pollack and his team out of the University of Washington, along with several researchers around the globe. Now, this idea didn't come out of nowhere. It has been working through um, the systems of science for decades now, but it was actually Pollock's lab out of the University of Washington that identified this fourth phase of water and its unique properties. So let's go through those really quick. Now, this fourth phase of water is a gel-like substance. It's viscous, it's not runny like the liquid water we drink in our glasses. Now, so many of us think of water as the static thing. Our glasses are filled with H2O, a little Mickey Mouse head with the Mickey Mouse hydrogen ears, and those are all floating around in the glass in this uniform dance. And that really isn't how it is at all. Water is a very dynamic substance, and those hydrogens attached to the water, to the oxygen, are in a constant flux and dance. And what we see is that when energy is added into the system, when infrared energy especially is added into the system, that water, that bulk water or regular water that we're used to talking about is transformed into structured water or easy water. And what that means is that the hydrogens within that H2O, within that water, are tightly bound into a lattice structure. It looks like the hexagonal patterns of a honeycomb. Um, those bees are so smart, right? So this is that structure and it's very dynamic. It takes on a liquid crystal property and what we know about crystals is they exclude any impurities and they have the ability to create and conduct electricity. When we're talking about quartz or the liquid crystals that power our computer screens, our smartphone screens, our TV screens, we're talking about a mesophase between a solid and a liquid and the ability for that crystalline structure to transmit information over long distances. That's exactly what's happening in our screens. And that technology is also at play within this fourth phase of water. Instead of H2O, that fourth phase of water is H3O2. It is tightly bound and structured and it forms against hydrophilic surfaces. Now this is something that Gerald Pollack and his lab found extensively um, throughout research showing that this structured water forms against hydrophilic surfaces. It builds in layers with the input of infrared energy. And the biggest source of infrared energy on our planet is of course our sun, right? But infrared energy can come from so many things. It can come from touch. It can come from um, heating of all kinds. So there's an abundance of infrared energy in our environment at all times. And that is what Pollock and his team found. He found that the introduction of infrared energy into this easy zone built that easy zone, built, built that structured water against that hydrophilic surface. So you've got the hydrophilic surface and you've got these sheets of structured water, that lattice formation of those hydrogen atoms that are bonding into a sheet formation and building against that hydrophilic surface. Now, as that easy water builds, on the outside of it, there's that bulk water, that H2O that we're familiar with, that builds on the outside of that structured water zone. 
Now what Pollock did was he put an electrode in one in the easy water, the structured water, and another one in that bulk water. And what he saw was that it created a current of electricity, enough to power an LED light. It's really phenomenal that this water battery within us has the ability to create energy and to power biological functions. Now, when we're talking about uh, powering our own intercellular water, we need to remember that contrary to what we learned in school, our cells are densely packed and the, cell, and the water within those cells is structured water, is this exclusion zone water, this gel-like water. And when you look at the body, you know, when we were taught in school, we've got cells floating around, you go into the cell and you can float over to the mitochondria or make your way over to a lysosome or whatever it may be. That is not at all the reality of what's happening in our living body. Our cells are so densely packed. Our body is so densely packed that we can never get far away from one structure without running into another structure. The actual um, length, I think, is six or seven water molecules of distance before you run into another structure. So this is very densely packed, which runs in direct contradiction to what we learned in school, right? That these random collision of molecules enzymes with their lock and receptor is how our body functions. Somehow these uh, molecules find each other, that lock and key model through random collision. But again, now that we know that inside the cell, inside our body is densely packed and packed with this uh, intercellular water, with this structured water, we know that that model doesn't make sense at all. The quantum biological model makes much more sense. This easy water, this structured water that creates that battery that we were talking about with the bulk water within our body, it also has that liquid crystal ability to trap energy and information from light, from sound, from the frequencies of thought, from movement. So there are a bunch of different ways that this structured water can collect trap and utilize energy from our environment. And this is exactly what Pollock found. He did another amazing research uh, experiment where he took a hydrophilic tube, just like the tubes in our body, our lymphatic uh, system, our blood vessels and cardiovascular system, our nanotubules of collagen that make up the connective tissue and our fascia connecting all of our cells throughout our body. They are all hydrophilic. Our cell membranes, all of these things are hydrophilic and creating that structured water body outside of them, which then creates that separation between the bulk water, the H2O within the body, creating that water battery. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, when Pollock took a hydrophilic tube, like a straw, and placed it in water, he saw the same thing. He saw the flow of protons and quantum particles through that hydrophilic tube. And what's more is that it actually drove the motion of that water. And we see that with uh, pictures in the water droplets along fascia. Check out my upcoming video all about fascia and structured water. I'll show you some pictures in that video. Uh, it is absolutely phenomenal, the relationship between these hydrophilic tubes and the creation of easy water within the tubes, outside the tubes, powering the flow of fluid, of protons, electrons, and quantum particles of all kind. This is a massive, 
a vast communication system within our body that we didn't learn in school and is just being acknowledged in medical science and science overall. But it is something that when you look at the evidence, it's quite compelling. It builds a picture of this structured water body lining our hydrophilic surfaces, our cell membranes, our tissues, our blood vessels, our lymphatic vessels, our craniosacral fluid uh, vessels. All of these things have the ability to create that structured water battery and to create that flow of uh, protons and information throughout the body. So this is, um, in a nutshell, what structured water is, and it hints to its capacity to explain how the body works outside of that random collision Newtonian biology model that we all learned in school. So thank you so much. Go ahead and leave your questions down below. I'm happy to answer them and stay tuned for more videos.